And here is the track in Leger. Massive climb to start. Two main climbs dominate this course. Then it nibbles into these technical sections in the woods before heading back down towards the start finish area through the Red Bull routes and roll section. Vittoria Graphene uphill, another climb. Winds its way to the top of the course, maximum elevation, and back down through this really, really fast four cross track descent. A little punch back up through some off camber grassy turns and then back to the start finish, just over three kilometers in length. And it's green, they go in Leger, Jordan Saru in the middle of your picture. In the red jersey, explodes off the line. Koretsky, his compatriot alongside him. There's Schwartz Bauer at the front as well as Martins Blooms. And a bubble oh, in the middle of the yeah. pack, and they're down now. Where is Nino Scherr? No, he's in front of this crash for sure, but see how dusty it is. And also over there, how dusty it is, and the rider the, will affect the vision of these riders. But at least the top 30 where the Nino is in it as well. Let's uh, just have a look at the center of your screens here. One of the riders just gets pushed over. Yeah, white handle. Balls, riders, yeah, very close together. You can and see it, the pack come together as they sweep left, and that's just what yeah, done yeah, it. Good night, Vienna, in the, the center of the screen. One of the riders hit the fence on the side, and then he, he ran into inside and hit another rider. As they smashed the way up yeah. this climb, and it's Vlad Descalu. Yeah, strong start of him. On the number 11 bike for Trek Factory Racing, the European champion, alongside Viktor Koretsky on the 34 bike in the grey jersey. Look at Nino Schurto with the number one on his bike there. already in the first few riders. There, there is, is Nino Schurter. What a start. Eight laps out in that part. It's extremely hot here today. This is going to be a battle of attrition. Then we saw the women's category, the women's category, the race was quite short, one, one hour 15. Yeah. So, uh, but it was on paper seven laps yesterday. So they've added an extra one today. Will that favor some riders and hinder some? Let's see, we'll get them across the line here. Lucas Schwartzbauer. Then Scherer, Dascalu, Saru, Koretsky, Vital Alvin, then Sink. 10.35 lap times. Blooms, Aldridge, Dubois, searingly fast lap times here in Leger. For Hans Grove, on the road occasionally, as well as specialised factory racing on the mountain bike. But as they head round to start lap three, the man driving the train remains the same. So at the start of lap three, Lucas Schwarzbar sets up, stretches the back out. As Koretsky breezes past, fancies a go at the front. This group of seven riders now controlling the pace at the front. And they're all big names. They're all riders who would fancy their chances of winning this one today. They trust their bike, they trust their self. And the recce laps, lap after lap after lap, they're choosing true. the lines. How many recce laps will the top elite riders do of a track like this before they go racing? I mean, first training day is on Thursday. Uh, they have women and then mix and then men mostly. Um, they do four or five on Thursday. Because I'm guessing it must be quite a balancing act of, you know, doing enough recce runs that you're comfortable on the track, but also not burning too many matches early It is, no, it, that's really important. And some of the sections, then they, they, they're cutting off the course and then they're doing a smaller part of the course several times, but wherever it's more difficult. But they have to practice it also on a higher speed because that makes sometimes a huge difference if you do it slowly just to reckon what it is or doing it on high speed. But now this is some high speed. <laughs> this, is, this is some high speed. The maximum speed. You the could shirt, see the shirt or speed. how he was taking the corners. 
and this a really hard section through here. Dead turns, roots, and we saw, I was on in this section yesterday when they had the recce time, you saw Nino doing lots of laps, trying different, different sections, different techniques. Yeah, he, a different line for him, but it didn't look like that's the fastest. Victor now, a small gap he has. And it almost looks like there's a couple of lines that are more risky. You know, the chance of a small crash or, or burping a tire. Or... Yeah, there are plenty of places to burp your tire yeah. here. <laughs> it's on high speed, a lot of off camber landings as well, sometimes off camber but he's so fast and, and so good technically you can yeah, see he's so able smooth. to relax and he gets that extra recovery because of his technical skill yeah that's how it works for him and of course i think also these stage races what he has done on the road the combination it works well for him it took him a while to find a good rhythm in that but certainly it is there and then it's makes him stronger. Yeah, I saw Tor, Tor of Burgos, he was uh, maybe second or third in one of the stages. Yeah, in one of, in one of the whoa, sprints, yeah. a bunch, a bunch sprint it was. It's like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. But, I guess but we see Pitcock or Ma Ma yeah, Mathieu van der Poel, we don't see him that often on the mountain bike anymore, but I mean also for these riders, they combine both disciplines yeah. on the highest level. But I guess it takes a while to learn the experience about the training around the stage races. Yeah, it's and the recovery and still Okay, the skills what you need to have riding uh, the mountain bike is different. Yeah. But and it's that mix of when do you do some intensity or when do you just have to chill. Yeah. It takes a while to learn, I guess. And also the opportunity and then the support of the team. Victor Koretsky, 21 seconds gap. Is that Nino behind him? Oh, it's not possible. It must be a back marker. 21 seconds yeah. the gap is. Saying 21 seconds on our screen in here, yes, yeah, so it must be. But the smile starting to spread. Just this last little punch of a climb. Then the man made rock section to go 20 seconds. Now the gap back to Nino Schurter. Koretsky, hands off in celebration. That's Nino Schurter. Guerini. Yeah. Guerini, you know. really? Oh, Daskalu. Yeah, and that's Guerini. No, Daskalu up to third. Daskalu up to third now. <laughs> so it's yo yo in behind him. And he's only five seconds behind Schurter. We have seen Daskalu. Very, very strong at the end of races this season already. Koretsky sitting down safely through the first rock section. Oh, Joshua Dibo dropped back to the fifth place. There's not going to be much in this at the line, you know. Victor Koretsky celebrates. He doesn't realise the pace that the mob are arriving at behind him. Koretsky. The gaps in between the riders, it's nothing. Absolutely yeah. nothing. Wife and son watch on. Victor Koretsky wow. wins an absolutely remarkable UCI mountain bike World Cup here in Leger, Haute Savoie. His first UCI World Cup cross country Olympic win of the season. Victor Koretsky takes victory. Never looked back, never looked in doubt. Class act from start to finish. Victor Koretsky wins at home in France. And look behind him. Nino Scherter from deep in the grid. Vlad Daskalu takes third. Full gas in the last sector of the last lap. Vlad Daskalu wins. Some confirmation of the results then. Koretsky from Scherter. Daskalu came through like a tree in late in the day. Garini, Debo, Shermans, Grio, Sink, Flukiger up in ninth. That could be crucial in the context of the overall this season. Joel Rott was 10th. Then it was Coladani, Charlie Aldridge, 227 back and 15th behind Martins Blooms. Victor Koretsky takes to the podium. Takes to the top step at his home round. Third UCI World Cup win. Cross country Olympic. That one will be the sweetest, huh? It has to be. Specialized factory racing rider was absolutely imperious today. Victor Koretsky wins the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup in Haute Savoie, Leger, at the UCI Mountain Bike World Series Festival, Haute Savoie.
Well, Victor, this seems to be what dreams are made of. Your second win this weekend in Lege in front of a fantastic crowd. Could you ask for much more than that today? Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's amazing. It was not my, my goal to, to, to be alone on the front, but I was in a good shape and, and then uh, it was easier to, to just uh, uh, push my pace and just uh, try to be the most uh, regular as possible, especially on the technical on the technical part. Sorry, I have the <laughs> and um, yeah on the forest. It was uh, easier for me to, to push a little bit more compared to the guys be f uh, f behind on, of me. So yeah, I, I, I was so happy. I'm so happy. Thanks a lot for our French crowd. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Vous me faites uh, chaud au cœur. Je suis beaucoup ému. Merci à vous et uh, je crois que j'oublierai jamais ce week-end de ma vie. Merci beaucoup. They absolutely love you. How dangerous can you be now with this confidence from this weekend? Uh, to, to win in one week, it's amazing. In France, in front of my family, in front of my French crowd, uh, I can believe it. I don't know, it was a, a dream week for me and I'm super happy. Um, uh, I can't believe it, thanks a lot. You go and celebrate, congratulations. Well, here is how it breaks down then. Nino Scherter, 98 points ahead of Matthias Blugiger. Still very little in it when you consider there's 250 for a win. Schwarzbars third, Saru's fourth, Griot's fifth, then Dubot, Forster, Haverly, Dascalu, and Blooms. Really nothing amongst it in that top four. Given how many points are up for grabs over the course of a weekend. Sherman's is 11th, then Brido, Koretsky. Valero, Serrano, and 14th, Brido, Cooper, Sink, Pitcock, Garini.